Hi guys, so today I'm going to do a video on what is fair trade. So in class, with your English teacher, you've been doing, you're talking about sustainability, and as one of those things that came up as part of that was fair trade. So I'm going to go through a slide and explain to you what is fair trade. So, so, do you know what fair trade is, guys? What is fair trade? H have you seen the mark? Have you seen what is it? Do you know what it means? So, let's start. You're doing a project in class. For example, say a poster explaining fair trade and your teacher says go and afterwards he comes back and he gives say everyone in the team all four people the same mark do you think that's fair do you think that is the correct way to do it do you think that if someone does most of the work that they should get a higher mark or do you think that as a group you should decide who gets all the marks or equal marks or should you say everyone get so much marks and then there's marks left where you can decide so that is something similar to what fair trade is yeah it tries to get the people who are doing the work to get paid for the work so so what rules will help you make this fair so in your project if you decided, could you make it fair or the way you get marks? Or are you happy that everyone gets the same mark? Or does your teacher break it down that you get the marks for the work you do? How is it decided? Were there things more difficult than you thought? And some one of the students had to do that. Yeah. How did each team member do on the activity? Why are you happy? So Fair trade. This is the fair trade logo. We're going to talk the fair trade, just as in your project, tries to get people who produce the product a fair price for their product. So today I'm going to try and teach you learn what fair trade is. You'll be able to give an example of fair trade and how it helps people and why it exists. And of course, we're going to try through this <clears throat> help your communication skills. So first. Fair trade footballs. So fair trade footballs are just one example where people's lives are improved in many ways through fair trade sch schemes. So I'm going to show you a clip about footballs. Did you know or did you know they exist fair trade footballs? Why are you aware? So you're going to see a clip of about a place in the world that makes the vast majority of footballs soccer footballs so here is the clip this is a film about football and fair trade most of us know a fair amount about football it's a beautiful game Give anyone, anywhere, any age of football, and they'll start kicking it around. If we're not playing it, we're watching it. And a lot of us know a bit about fair trade. Many people who produce the things we enjoy and rely upon don't get paid fairly for their work. That means they could struggle to feed their families, send children to school, and pay for medicines. Fair trade means that the farmers and workers living in developing countries who grow our food and the cotton in our clothes get a better deal. You might have seen the fair trademark when you're out shopping. There are over 4,500 products that carry the fair trade mark. This means a better deal for the people who grow our tea, coffee, bananas, sugar, cocoa, footballs. But you can't grow a football. So what do footballs have to do with fair trade? And firstly, how do you even make a football? To find out, we're going to Sialkut 
a city in the province of Punjab in Pakistan. There are over 180 million people living in Pakistan, and over 20% are living on less than $1.25 a day. 40 million footballs are made in the factories of Sialkot each year. This rises to 60 million every four years, when it's a World Cup year. Footballs made in these factories are shipped all over the world. Here, the workers are preparing the sheets of polyurethane to be cut into pieces to make the ball. A machine is used to cut the pieces so they are all the exact size. A football is made up of 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons. The pieces are screen printed individually. Traditionally, footballs were always stitched by hand. Nowadays, many are machine stitched to save time. Some are thermally bonded, so don't use stitches at all, but use a type of glue heated up. Most top quality footballs are still sewn by hand. This is Tanbe. He's a hand stitcher at Ali Trading. Tanbe stitches footballs by hand. I play football. I like football a lot. My younger brother also likes football. I like the Brazilian team. Hand stitching is skilled work. An average stitcher can sew up to five footballs a day. Footballs are stitched inside out so that the stitches are on the inside. This is when the bladder is put into the ball. The air valve is added and the last stitch is made. This is not the end of the journey though. The footballs are then cleaned and checked to make sure they're in top condition. They go through lots of testing to check they're the right size, weight and bounce. Then they're deflated, put into plastic bags and packed into boxes. These boxes are loaded into lorries to be shipped. Around 40,000 people in Sialkot work in the industry. That's almost a quarter of the population. But in 1996, when the eyes of the footballing world were watching the European Championship unfold in England, Sialkot hit the headlines for all the wrong reasons. It was reported that about 7,000 children were working up to 11 hours a day stitching footballs in the Sialkot region alone including children as young as five. Stitchers couldn't earn enough money to feed their families, and some were forced to make their children work too, so that they could afford basics like food and healthcare. This meant that many of the children couldn't go to school. In 1997, an agreement was signed to stop the high rates of child labor in football production in Pakistan. To make sure this happened, stitchers could no longer work from home, and all the stitching had to be done in factories or rural stitching centres. In some cases, although children weren't working anymore, many families still couldn't afford to send them to school. Many families struggled because they were getting less money. This is because the workers and stitchers don't always get a fair wage for the work they do. While we might spend money on big sports brands, that money doesn't always make its way back to the people who made the products. This is where fair trade plays a role in tackling the root of the problem. Poverty and workers not receiving a fair wage. A fair wage means that workers can afford to send their children to school rather than out to work. What does fair trade aim to do for football workers? Decent wages. Good working conditions. No child labour. Fair trade premium. The fair trade premium is the extra money from the sale of each fair trade football that's used to fund community projects that benefit workers and their families and is a very important part of fair trade. Fair trade certified football factories each have a fair trade premium committee that represents all factory workers and stitchers. They consult with the workers and stitchers and decide on the best use for the premium money. In the area of Silcot, not everyone has safe drinking water, and there have been many problems with sickness caused by drinking dirty water. The Fair Trade Premium Committee at Vision Technologies decided to put the Fair Trade Premium into providing safe, clean water to benefit not just the workers, but the whole community. They've also invested in buses to bring workers to the factories, as some had to walk a long way to and from work each day. Recognising the importance of education, they've also spent premium money on books and school bags for children. We are getting a lot of support from the Fair Trade Premium. It means that our children are getting an education. 
there are many other benefits from vapor. For example, the eye clinic and the water plant. I'm most happy about the education of our children because of fair trade. It is very helpful. We are very happy with fair trade. The Akat's three children, Hadia, Amina and Abu, are all in school. I want to be a teacher so that I can teach children, just as I am getting an education. Science. My favorite subject at school is science. I want to be a doctor and help people. There are many benefits of fair trade. We have established a fairly priced shop. We have also bought school bags and school books for children. We set up two water filtration plants because there was a problem with access to clean water. There are also eye tests for workers. This helps people with eye-related problems like headaches, so we are very grateful to Fairtrade. Tambe has four children between the ages of 4 and 15. Before fair trade, we had many difficulties, but since fair trade, we are getting many benefits. We have more facilities now, clean water, school bags and books for the children. How many times have you been playing or watching football and yelled, that's not fair, when somebody dives or makes a bad tackle? It makes for a difficult game if somebody isn't playing fair. And yet most of us don't know about the unfairness at the very heart of the game. By choosing fair trade footballs, you can help the people who made your football get a better deal. So guys, were you aware that even how footballs are part of the fair trade deal? Did you are you aware that you can buy fair trade football? Do they exist in Spain? I don't know. So Maybe the next time you're going looking for a football, you buy a fair trade instead of an Adidas one. Probably it's cheaper. So fair trade helps education, lifestyle, medicine, wages. And I'm going to show you a video on sustainability. Also make sure that workers are safe, no child labor, and that people are getting a fair price. Sustainability. How can fair trade help with sustainability? There's a lot of talk about sustainability at the moment, but what does it all mean? And how does fair trade fit in? Well, sustainability is about more than the environment, in the same way that fair trade is about more than just fair prices. They're both about people and meeting their needs today without compromising the needs of people in the future. To do this, our economy, societies and the environment all need to be sustainable. And you can't tackle any of these on their own, as they're closely interconnected. So, for fair trade, sustainability is about working on all of them. Whether it's fighting for a living wage for workers, training farmers to be more resilient to climate change, or enabling communities to invest in education. Fair trade empowers farmers and workers to face a range of economic, environmental and social challenges. It's also about supporting and challenging businesses and governments to make trade fairer and inspiring shoppers to think a bit more about what they buy. These are all foundations of sustainability. Uh, let's give you an example. This is Teresa, a fair trade coffee farmer in Nicaragua. She wants the same things from work that you do, security, equality and a decent income so she can build a stronger future for her family. But uh, this isn't always easy. Farmers face all sorts of challenges and often don't have resources or the support to tackle them. So, how does fair trade make a difference? Well, Teresa's a member of a fair trade certified cooperative, an organized group of farmers who support each other, sharing knowledge about how to grow and sell coffee. This gives Teresa security as she can sell better quality beans and earn at least the fair trade minimum price to cover the cost of producing them. She's also learning how to look after and adapt to the changing environment, which makes her livelihood more stable and her farm more environmentally friendly. Teresa's cooperative want women and men to gain equally from farming, so they've used the fair trade premium, the extra money they get to spend on business or community projects, to support women like Teresa to market their coffee and gain more independence. Teresa also used a small loan scheme funded by the premium to buy more land 
which has allowed her to increase her productivity and income and make her a more reliable supplier. These economic, environmental and social impacts contribute to a more secure, equal and sustainable future for Teresa, her family and her community. And it goes wider than that. Fairtrade works with over a million other farmers like Teresa every year. Fairtrade also supports hundreds of thousands of workers on large plantations to improve their working conditions, their standard of living and their confidence by making sure they're treated properly. They also get the premium to invest in building a better life for themselves and their communities. So, whether you're a business managing your supply chain or a shopper deciding what goes in your basket, choosing fair trade contributes to a more sustainable world for us all. So, there you have it. That's why fair trade means sustainable trade. So, as I said, one of fair trade's goal is sustainability on environment. So by you buying fair trade products, you are helping sustainability around the world. Chocolate. We love it. It's one of the world's most popular treats. In the UK alone. That's another video on fair trade. So what is fair trade? Have we learned what fair trade is? Can you give examples now of what? fair traders you've seen you know, talk about coffee they talk about football but bananas cocoa beans um fruit many products around the world tea so do you think fair traders organization is needed and why do you think this is right do you think it's right that part of the money is given back to the farmers for them to decide how to spend it not just someone else deciding that they get a price and do you think that's fair do you think in a project it will be fair that the team decide who gets some of the marks not just the teacher so so fair trade ensures there's a fair deal for the people who produce your food through fair trade agreements workers are paid a minimum wage no children are allowed to work as you saw with the footballs it makes sure that workers are safe at work farmers get a best price for their crops in the poor parts of the world. Four main aims of fair trade is to provide a fair trade mark as a consumer guarantee in a product. So that mark helps you decide at the supermarket what to buy, helps they also help promote fair trade products, helping producers to sell their to traders and retailers. So sometimes the problem with farmers is they don't know who to sell it to. That fair trade gets in contact with traders in other parts of the world and get them in direct in contact with the farmers. So the farmers sell directly to the retailers. Working with others to support other organizations and networks and then raises public awareness for the need for fair trade and its importance. So so to make what is on fair trade, people who work on farms have no guarantee that they will get a reasonable price for their product. Meaning they have poor living conditions and in the long run, this is not sustainable. So that's the end of the class. Hope you now know what fair trade is.